Comsco gave us this Porto Mac scooter, and we're gonna find out, is this a good alternative to an e-bike in campgrounds or in boondocking spots? We're gonna take you along as we find out. Today is an exciting day. I've been harassing Gary for the past two months about the idea of getting e-bikes. I think that our style of travel and being out in the middle of nowhere, having something that is electronic that can help get us somewhere faster than our feet is a good plan. But unfortunately, we are out in Redmond and we do not have our hitch extension. But if you know me, I don't give up that easily. So we came up with a plan B option. And this is the plan. You're dirty. And I'm gonna open this up while Gary is working on caulking. I think this is a better deal. And what did I get? Oh, you can't see that. <laughs> I don't think I'm winning. We have the Porto Max electric scooter from Havsco. Hopefully this will be an interesting difference instead of going straight to the e-bike. We're gonna get this out and charged and see what this thing can do. I had to call in for reinforcements. I am going to do a minimal amount of unboxing because I think those are so boring. But I do want to say that this looks very nicely wrapped, very well protected. But you're going to see the bike in one, two, and there she is. All right, it's go time. It is charged and ready to go. I will say I have never ridden an e-bike or an e-anything, so this is going to be kind of fun. Uh, it even has a kickstand. Brake, right, left brake. Okay, so we've got the little thumb do jobby. Let's go. Woo! It's a little fast. Oh my god. <laughs> Whee! Okay, this is kind of fun. Big bumps. <laughs> <laughs> Very easy, just press the thumb and go. Use your brakes when you need to. One of the first advantages of this Hofsco Porto Max is the price. This is a sub $500 unit, and it's a great start if you've not had any electric vehicles. Very simple to operate, um, and you know, really just get you around in a quick fashion. $500 for this is an excellent price, I'd say considering most scooters in that range have pretty poor suspension. It's the same speed as most of the ones I've seen, but it having, having the seat, basket, all of that, dual brakes included, is actually pretty good for like pricing and quality. While this Porto Max isn't the lightest, it's not too bad. If you have a back seat, this works out pretty well and getting it out of here. I think the biggest challenge is making sure your handlebars aren't getting stuck anywhere, but it rolls out relatively easily. That handlebar does fold down, but it doesn't fold straight back, which does make it a little bit more challenging to maneuver it into our truck. It does help if you have two people. Generally, Gary and I do it together, just so we're not gonna damage anything in our truck. One of the obvious benefits of this scooter is if you're in a campground and you need to use the bathroom or you need to take your garbage to a place, you can do that pretty easily on this little Hosco scooter. Just tooling along here. I'm gonna show you this screen right now. The camera just doesn't do this really well, but we have the speed in the big numbers here. You've got low, medium, and high. If you quick press, your light comes on. You kind of do a double tap to get to high, medium, and low. I generally leave it on medium unless I'm doing longer distances. Other thing is the LCD screens. They're sometimes hard to see. I'm really happy with this one because I can see them with my polarized sunglasses. Mm -hmm. I like that. As far as charging this thing, you cannot remove the battery. So that's one thing to be aware of. 
If you have a 110 outlet outside of your RV, this is the perfect thing to do. There's a little port right here. You just plug the charger in there and go. It takes a couple hours, not too bad. Also make sure when you're done charging that you get that rubber gasket in there nice and firm. That will help it prevent getting water in there. So based on my experience, I have had two scooters now. Having the double brakes, one for front, one for rear is very nice because not having two brake system makes for a much slower stop which is something I've actually almost had issues with. <laughs> oh, good point. Had my hat in speed mode, we're good to go. But another big thing that I like is having larger wheels. These look like 12 inch wheels in comparison to mine on that, which are 10. Having the bigger wheels makes for better bumpiness so you don't feel the bumps as much. So rear wheel drive makes it a lot easier because sometimes if you're not putting enough weight on the front end, your front wheels will spin on front wheel drive scooters. Oh, I didn't so think about that. So if you that. don't lean forward when you're trying to accelerate, you will just spin the tires and go nowhere. Some scooters have trigger throttles that go over that. I like the thumb throttle because it keeps your finger in more of a secure position when you're riding. As for maneuverability, this Porto Max surprised me. It ended up handling a lot more terrain than I was expecting. And honestly, we were using it for not the intended purposes of this scooter. Let's go for it. Whoa! <laughs> I almost dumped it. First off, it works great around campgrounds. If you're going to go to the bathroom or take garbage away, and the campgrounds are a little larger these days. So having something that you can quickly hop on and off, it works fantastically for that. So it works great on regular pavement, on packed dirt on, or packed gravel. If your campground is mildly hilly, you're not going to have a problem. But if you have steeper hills, you may have a bit of a power drop on this Hubsco port to go through really steep hills. <laughs> oh. Sure, why not? We're doing off-roading, baby. Let's see if we can do it. I doubt it. Well, most of the way, though. That's pretty good. As far as maneuverability, I did have some challenges on the hill over at Penpack that was a steeper hill. A little skidding. Ooh, it's having a hard time. That had a lot of very loose gravel. It did handle it, but it was a little wonky, so I had to put my feet down in order to get through that safely. If you're on really loose gravel, you just need to be more aware. Also, heavy sand. I would never expect this thing to go through heavy sand at all. It seemed to be okay. I did have to walk it a few times when I really got deep. One thing I was able to do on this scooter that I hadn't been able to do without it was to head to a local grocery store for just a few items. We were leaving the campground and missing just a few things. So I was able to take this scooter in about two miles to the grocery store, grab a few things and come back without having to move the camper. And that was Honestly, quite huge for me. I was quite excited about that. Another thing I like about this scooter is honestly for us older folks, the ability to sit. The seat is rather cushy and I've used it on some pretty rough trails. It does a great job. That for me made me feel a lot more comfortable, a lot more secure in my handling. Standing up, your center of gravity is just up. It makes you feel a bit uncomfortable. With this one, you're sitting nicely and it's just very comfortable. Another thing I like is having the basket and seat. That is, a lot of people have difficulty with standing scooters because one bump and you can wobble your legs and you lose balance and that causes a lot of wipeouts you see online. One of the biggest advantages of having this Havsco Porto Max was to scout out potential boondocking places for us. We could take this scooter to scout out a potential site instead of taking our whole rig into an area that may be difficult to get out. We can get the Porto Max out of our backseat in a few minutes and I'd take a walkie talkie to communicate if I found a suitable spot. There's a clearing here that might work. It's not far. I need you to walk on it and make sure it's not muddy. I'm coming back. Okay. I ended up taking it on some boondocking trails and there are definitely oh more 
suited for fat tires. It was not an easy run, but it did handle it. The weight capacity of this, considering how small it is, is pretty decent. It's 260 pounds, so you take that if you're going to go to the grocery store. So as you start getting a little closer to that weight, it's not going to be as spry, but we seem to do all right. I was on there and had no problems. Gary was able to ride this as well, although you can tell it wasn't as punchy as it was with me. If you've been watching our channel, you know that we give both the good and the potentials for improvement on any product that we have on here. And this is no different. There are a couple of things that I think could be improved on. Um, the first thing is the bike basket. The bike basket is great to have, but you are limited in what you can put in there. However, you can put a different size basket on there and honestly do what you want. I will say that when Gary was riding the Havsco Porto Max, he did have a problem where the seat kept on coming down. We were able to tighten it a bit more, but you might have to use a little bit more force in order to get that seat to sit properly. So we have a good, that's a cat. So we have a good 20 miles on this scooter. So not a ton, but enough to kind of get a good idea. One of the things I have noticed is that once the power gets below 60%, it does seem to be a little slower. It doesn't seem to have quite the pep it does when it's in that 60 to 100%. Um, it's struggling a little bit at the three bar mark. Something changed between four and three. If it's gonna run out, it's gonna be here. Not that it's not working, it just doesn't quite have the pep as it does when it's closer to being fully charged. And the biggest question, if I had this to do it over, would I get the Hubsco Porto Max instead of maybe an e-bike? And honestly, I think that depends. For us, I think I'd need a little bit more oomph for the type of places that we had. Having something that has pedals that I can help the motor with I think would be better in our specific situation. If I had a choice I'd probably try the Porto Max foldable e-bike and it's about the same price as this scooter uh, but if I was in campgrounds generally or um, not out in boondocking places a lot I think this might be easier simpler a lot more fun so I think it just depends on your situation if you're generally in campgrounds I think this would be perfect simple straightforward and just fun to ride if you are in boondocking places where you're starting to have heavier hills which is kind of where we're at you really want to have those pedals in order to give you that extra oomph to get over that along with the electric motor that's kind of our thought if you have any questions about it let us know in the comments if you are interested in purchasing one of these we do have a link below thanks again we'll chat with you later